Massive electricity shortages coming our way this summer. You can see this a mile away. <sighs> so frustrating. So frustrating. All right. Um, the intended consequences of climate policy. Electricity shortage warnings grow across the U.S. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see if we can get a... Uh, Let's see if we can get a, 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 a reading of the article. Hey, I do have access to the whole thing. What do you know? Cool, I think. Right here, electricity shortage warnings grow across the U.S. Well, why is that? Well, from California to Texas, Indiana, electric grid operators are warning that power generating capacity is struggling to keep up demand, a gap that could lead to rolling blackouts. California's grid operator said Friday that it anticipates a shortfall of supplies this summer, especially in extreme heat, wildfires, or delays in bringing new power sources online. <laughs> delays in bringing new power sources online. Uh, the mid the mid MISO, the mid MISO, MISO, the mid continent independent system operator, which oversees a large regional grid spanning much of the Midwest said late last month the capacity shortages may force it to take emergency measures to meet summer demand. In Texas, where a number of power plants lately went offline for maintenance, the grid operator warned of a tight conditions. The risk of electric, this is from the Wall Street Journal now, the risk of electricity shortages is rising through the U.S. as traditional power plants are being retired more quickly than they can be replaced by the evils of renewable energy. Oh, and battery storage, battery storage. Power grids are making the transition, uh, feeling the strain as they make the transition from conventional power plants fueled by coal and natural gas to cleaner forms of energy, such as wind and solar. And aging nuclear power plants are slated for retirement in many parts of the country. The challenge is that wind and solar farms, which are among the cheapest forms of power generation, <laughs> don't produce electricity at all times and need large batteries to store their output for later use. Oh, yeah, that's, just, that's all they need is large batteries. No big deal. While a large amount of battery storage is under development, again, Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal is corrupt as all can be. This is freaking idiotic. Regional grid operators have lately warned the, p the pace may not be fast enough. You think they've only lately warned that? All right, so let's read the comments because this is just idiotic that the Wall Street Journal will say that. Cheap, cheap, because this stupid lady said uh, solar and wind are among the cheapest forms of power generation. Cheap, eh? Or the miserable, uh, not accounting for subsidies, or the miserable percentage of nameplate rating actually produced, which is what I've been saying for many, many moons. I haven't said that on my community page a couple times recently because we have people who don't know what they're talking about. They're saying, I got a 10 megawatt power plant run by solar and wind. No, you don't. Uh, let's see. I, I'd argue that perhaps the lights literally going out in California would send an unambiguous an message to California that the renewable plans isn't ready for prime time. Yep, 100%. So anyway, I want to show you something else here, too, because we got this that uh, actually kind of... Uh, it's our uh, unicorns, cotton candy, and she's uh, farting rainbows. There's our solar photovoltaic. There's our hydro. They don't use hydro anymore, and there's our wind. Uh, look, it's just beautiful. Everything's green. No, nothing's getting damaged. It's great. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> right here, Dr. Uh, Willie Soon. The challenge is that wind and solar farms, which are among the cheapest forms of power generation, don't produce electricity at all times. Yeah, let's take a look at what, uh, what he... Uh, Catherine Blunt, who's the author of the Wall Street Journal article, who's obviously smoking blunts because she had not know what else she talked about, does not mention the hideous cost of batteries. Instead, implying that the slow pace of battery backup installations because of supply chain problems and inflation. They also describe solar and wind as the cheapest forms of generation without qualifying the statement, adding that the cost of power storage capacity required to make re renewable energy reliable, the cost of massive renewable energy over capacity to charge the batteries during good times and maintain power supply during mediocre times, and the cost of upgrading and maintaining in a large power distribution network to ship renewable energy from the frequently remote areas to cities and industrial complexes where it complexes where it's needed. Once you factor in these renewable specific additional costs, 
Renewable energy is very expensive indeed. So let's take a look at the cost of batteries, shall we there, Catherine Blunt? Uh, the storage problem is a critical issue that must be addressed if there's ever going to be net zero. Yep. All right, so let's read this. My man over the Manhattan Contrarian. I'm going to look at discussions of the storage situation coming out of three jurisdictions, California, Australia, and New York. Uh, for a very brief summary of the problem, it is or certainly should be obvious that wind and solar generators have substantial periods where they do nothing. All right. So basically what he's saying here, we're going to go into this. He goes right here. You'll find that to have a fully wind solar generation system and make and, and make it through the year without a catastro catastrophic, cata catastrophic, catastrophic failure, you need approximately three times over build based on rated capacity. Uh, again, we're talking, and this, we all know what nameplate capacity is, how silly it is, of the wind and solar system, plus storage for something in the range of 24 to 30 days of average use. For these purposes, usage at any given moment is measured in gigawatts. But so remember that usage of any given moment is measured in gigawatts. That's why I always say I got a 30 megawatt uh, facility. It doesn't mean crap. That's just for one moment of time. All right. So usage for any given moment is measured in gigawatts, megawatts, kilowatts, watts. But usage for some period of time is measured in gigawatt hours, kilowatt hours, megawatt hours, not gigawatts. California's average electricity usage for 2020 was about 31 gigawatts, all right? Australia, about 26 gigawatts, and New York, about 18 gigawatts, all right? So again, average usage in California at any given time was 31 gigawatts. To cal calculate how much storage you need in actual gigawatt hours over an extended period of time, you multiply the average uses in gigawatts by 30 days and 24 hours per day. So California will need about 22,302 gigawatt hours of storage to provide the 20 to 43, 30, 24 to 30 days average of needed for electricity. If we're going to be able to get our needs met. 22,000 gigawatt hours of storage. All right. And that is to supply current levels of demand. For the everything electrified, everything, that's not even including transportation. We're just talking about your basic electricity needs. We're not talking about the other things that rely on fossil fuel that, that falls under the un energy umbrella. Uh, you trip all these numbers. So we need 67,000 gigawatt hours of storage in California. 67,000 gigawatt hours. All right. Price that out at current cost at the Tesla type lithium ion batteries, which is about 150 dollars per kilowatt hour and you will get around 10 trillion dollars for california and another 5.8 trillion for new york these figures are in the range of triple the annual gdp for each of these jurisdictions before you even get to the cost of the three times of the overbuild of the generation system to account for the charging of the batteries when the sun is shining and wind blowing nor can tesla style batteries hold charge for months on end as would be necessary for the system but at this point, just minor. With that, let's consider some recent discussion about net zero. In March, uh, Photovoltaic PV Magazine had a piece by Christian something that says the title, California solar market is now a battery market. The gist is that California solar developers have now caught on to the need to pair batteries with their projects. And that therefore new projects going forward are as much battery projects as solar panel projects. <sighs> no state has led the energy transition like California. As a result, California is a pioneer. It's on the cusp of no longer being a solar market where batteries are being added. Instead, it's become a battery market that sometimes includes solar, you think? So how much battery capacity is being added? Huh. According to the American Clean Power Association, California only had 256 megawatts of utility-scale batteries. 256 megawatts. That's it. That's it, of utility scale batteries. Before 2020, but uh, had uh, before 2020, but it reached 2.1 gigawatts by the end of 2021, an eightfold increase. The 256 storage plus uh, solar plus storage projects, representing 72 gigawatts and 4, 64 gigawatts as battery, makes up the majority of the hybrid projects that California is looking at. 
They'll need energy storage. All the energy storage it can get its hands on. A recent analysis suggests that state needs 37 gigawatts of batteries over the next 20 years. 37 gigawatts of batteries over the next 20 years, as well as 53.2 gigawatts of utility cell scale solar. It's all gigawatt, 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 but that's not what we need. We need gigawatt hours. How much of the amount of gigawatt hours will that need? You will not find any mention of that unit. They're saying, look, we already have 256 megawatts. We added 2.1 gigawatts. We're fine. And we're going to get under 72 and 64 gigawatts online so shortly. That doesn't mean crap. A gigawatt is on any given second, any given moment of time. Not, okay, ready? Boop, boop. That's gigawatt. But now what happens the next second? Ah, oh, sorry, you ran out. Uh, you will not find any mention of the gigawatt hours of storage needed. Sorry, but if those 64 gigawatt of batteries you are planning to buy only store energy for an hour, then you'll need to multiply your purchase by a factor of 1,000. If they store energy for about four hours, typically what, what you might buy today, then multiply your factor, your, uh, your purchase by 250. Could they really be that far off from the actual problem? Of course. Anyway, the point being is this freaking nuts, dudes. We're going to get massive blackouts because they can install all the damn solar panels they want. Doesn't mean crap if you have no capacity to store. It just doesn't mean anything. Which is why if you're a solar, if you're putting solar, rooftop solar or a, a ground-based solar and you don't have a battery system, I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I, I just, I think that's stupid. I think you need to have, you need to have battery packs because you're grid tied. And grid tied means they shut it down. Even if you got solar, doesn't mean crap. You got to have batteries. What happens at night? Anyway, be prepared for massive blackouts because of renewable energy. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.